I understand we have decided to continue supporting the outlaw scientist, Dr. Phineas Wells. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Purpleberry Budge. Well, well, Dr. Fenhill. It's not often I see you on this side of Sick Bay. I make it a point not to get shot, and when I do, I can usually take care of the mess myself. It'd be nice to have you in here, patching people up, not just blowing them apart. I respect what you're doing here, but you know I'm not ready to settle down. It's not you, it's me. Have it your way, then. You always do. Now, about your friend here. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. After Chase the Rainbow. This is Halcyon News. We interrupt your regularly scheduled advertisement for the following story. You mind trying to have a moment here? Yeah, I was called that once upon a day. You need something? Rufus and I are no longer on speaking terms. I don't know where he is. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You're telling me you're on a first-name basis with Ms. Tennyson? All right. I'm gonna take your word for it. Rufus is hiding out in Emerald Vale. Got a few friends with him. 
That's as much as I know. Please, just make it quick. That's right. Our marriage contract expired some months ago. And seeing how he's technically an outlaw, I wouldn't renew even if I wanted to. Precious little. He and Rufus worked together on the Groundbreaker some years back before he vanished. A few years later, Rufus gets a message from an old friend. Something about starting a revolution. Something about getting rich. Abandoned his work and ran off that very day. Only that Rufus is in a bad way. He came to see me a little ways back. Said he had to go into hiding. Never asked why. He was here to collect his personals, complain about Harlow to me, and say goodbye. In that order. No, and he was particular about that. Said I was better off not getting entangled in his mess. Little late for that, says I. Appreciate it. No offense, meant. Just been a long day, is all. I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial. We are now in orbit above Edgewater, Captain.
I don't know who you are or why you're prowling around here, but I'm willing to make a guess. You're one of Harlow's gun hands, ain't you? He sent you after me. Right. You just stumbled into a camp full of armed strangers because you wanted directions. How much is Harlow paying you? A favor, huh? Let me guess. He promised you some reward in the brave new world that was to come. Said he'd make you his lieutenant if you crossed me off. Thing is, you and I are at an impasse. Harlow wants me dead, and I've got no intention of dying. How do I know that I can trust you? Yeah, guess that's a fair point. Listen, I don't know what lies Harlow's dripped down your ear, but you'd be a fool to trust him. I never betrayed Harlow. Harlow betrayed all of us. The board's got him in their pocket, been paying him off for years. All that palaver about revolutions? It's a lie. You're a real piece of work, Trask. Not just a turncoat, but a liar, too. Go piss up a rope, kid. I've got nothing to prove to you. That's the whole truth. Harlow's just another bored asset, a two-bit mercenary wearing a dissident's clothes. Yeah, I've got proof. There's always a paper trail when the board's involved. I chanced upon some correspondence between Harlow and his employer. I don't know that it makes a difference. What was I to do with that evidence? Bring it in front of the board? There's no authority in Halcyon willing to take Harlow to task. Huh. You ain't like other board agents I heard about. You got a functioning spine. You want to confront Harlow yourself? Be my guest. I hid my papers before Harlow chased me out. Back in the middle of the base, there's an old vent in a utility corridor. I stashed my evidence in that vent. Because he's for sale. Anything the board can buy, the board will buy. And that includes loyalty. Harlow was a charismatic bastard, and he was ruthless. With Harlow in their pocket, the board had an informant, a pirate, a smuggler, and a gang leader all rolled up into one odious excuse for a human being. Sounds like a deal to me. Board sanctioned piracy. Harlow went after the ships the board wanted destroyed capturing anybody the board wanted captured. If we captured you, we'd ransom you. Harlow liked to do the job himself. Gather up the captives on his own ship, vanish for a couple of days. Only that's not what happened. Harlow's been selling his captives off to the board. I don't know where they ended up. Re-education, Tartarus, maybe worse. Take it you've made up your mind. You gonna tell Harlow I'm dead? May as well. I'm never going back to that life again. Uh, here, take the ring. And for what it's worth, my gratitude.
Crew report. Bioka is drunk. Surprise. What's the word? <laughs> Not surprised. Trask was a dead man trying to negotiate with his own executioner. He'd say anything to preserve his life. That's a damning accusation. Am I right to presume you have some evidence on hand? Those papers don't prove a thing. We've all done business with the board. They own the whole damn colony. Trask put you up to this. <laughs> that miserable wretch. He's trying to undermine everything I stand for. You've got a lot of nerve calling me a liar to my face. How should I know? But what the hell do I care? Trask was a traitor. I didn't ask you to understand his motives. I asked you to cross him off. Clyde, look me in the eye and tell me it's not true. Tell me, and I'll believe you. Don't talk to me like I'm some common criminal, Felix. You're the one on trial, not me. I don't know what kind of poison that snake dripped in your ear, but as far as I'm concerned, you've been compromised. Picked up by... <laughs>
What was that? Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? This is... this is definitely not how I imagined it would end. The void's black, water's wet, and Clyde hated the board. That's something I just knew. Now? I don't know. I don't know what to think. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. This is, uh, this is a lot to take in. I always looked up to Clyde. The thought that he could be an agent of the board is just abhorrent to me. That's pretty harsh, boss. You including yourself in that lesson? Yeah, I guess I don't know what you're about. But I know you treated me fair. You've given me a lot to think about. I'm gonna be mulling over this whole mess for a couple of days. Part of me wishes we'd put Trask in the ground. You know, I think that's just my frustration talking. Thanks for your time, boss. Thank <laughs> you. 
are now in orbit above Byzantium, Captain. I've done plenty of smuggling. I'll lock up behind this you. thing with the chemicals is bold. Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Which brings us to where we are today, several messages and a few years late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. This is why I have to see them. They'll hardly recognize me. Reconnect is a strong word. And, uh, I was thinking you'd come too. Because it would be fun. It's, well, they know me as Marilyn the Surgeon. They don't know Ellie the Pirate Sawbones. But you, your authentic rabble, true riffraff, when they see you, they'll get it. Come on, I didn't leave home and become a pirate because I enjoy making responsible decisions. Great, and when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. You're the boss. Anything else? What did I tell you? His down with the man shtick was just an act. No one who yammers that much means half of it. Take a page out of my rule book. Don't trust anyone. Then it's easy. Don't get all mushy on me now. Come on, what did we just learn? People look out for their own interests. It's a fundamental law of nature, same as gravity and conservation of motion. Sure I can. In fact, I bet you I live a lot longer. I'm warning you, that reverse psychology stuff doesn't work on me. are worse things than a little solitude. Anyway, you really want to tell me you're helping the scientist because you think he'll save the colony? You're right. The point is that self-interest is like self-pleasure. No one wants to admit it, but everyone has a hand in it. Enough about Harlow, though. Anything else? I sure hope you negotiated for a raise with this Phineas guy. Then we'd better hope he doesn't blow himself up while we're gone. Or if he does, that he has a killer insurance policy. In either case, you should know Wells isn't the only game in town. The board's put a bounty on his head, and they've got more than enough bits to pay it. I've got no love for the corporations, but they know how to take care of their people. The ones at the top, anyway. Everyone is. The board just pays the best. I know you want to save the day, but don't forget to look after yourself. No one else out here is going to. Hey. 
Don't get any ideas. I'm just making sure you last long enough to pay me at the end of this. Anything else? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. Even the bribes are overpriced. Don't trust anyone, don't touch anything, and whatever you do, don't show your teeth when you smile. People are extremely competitive about cosmetic dentistry. It can get ugly. The real question is why didn't I leave sooner? There's all these invisible rules and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them. Call it what you want, it sucks. I was a top tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without 10 people signing off first. That's no way to live. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished and bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. Interesting like a colonoscopy. I trained as a surgeon. More my folks' idea than mine, but I made the best of it. Yeah, well, we all learn sometime, don't we? I finally got tired of spending my hard-won skills straightening noses and firming up chins. Turns out Byzantines are more concerned with having square shoulders and a good profile than, well, anything else. That's what I've been saying. Why can't something exciting happen around here for once? Nothing wrong with stability. It means everything's running like clockwork. Don't you ever want a little fun? Maybe see a broader ship? Hey, you! Yeah, you! The million bit smile? Like to make it work. According to local legend, if you walk around the orrery three times, your corporate rival will die of a paper cut. You think I'd get arrested if I climbed up on that to get a look at the gearings? Meh, nah, probably just shot. I've always loved that skull. You, with the hips, over here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Ah, oh, 
Celeste, you've done it again. I knew from the moment I laid eyes on you that I'd found my muse. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I pollinate the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? When I look at you, I see the very embodiment of everything the walls of Byzantium were built to keep out. Making an outfit worthy of you won't be easy. I'll need your help gathering the right materials. Everything I need to know can be deduced from a first impression. You're an outsider. You're exotic. You carry a whiff of barbarism and adventure. You're the embodiment of everything I want in my new line. Marvelous! You and I are going to wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face. What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. My dear, fashion is a performance art. An outfit without a body is like an instrument without a player. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. Fabulous! I can't wait to see what you dredge up. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back of the envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. Love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. 
I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe, I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. I can't wait. What can I do? Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to... Actually do it now. Y you know, there's there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. I love Byzantium. Where else are you going to find? Citizens, today marks a monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. After a deep and thorough examination of our budgets, revenues... Is it me, or could each of these homes fit all of Edgewater inside? Cannery and all. There's my parents' place. Smell that? In Marilyn, is that you? Laws! We certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble.
Play the ruffian angle some more. You're supposed to help me make an impression. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Come on, try to get into it a little more. Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors, She's right. Since when can you afford authentic Terran marble? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather uh, substantial. You what? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. Why did you do that? We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd... you'd run off to become a... a, a miscreant, could we? The neighbors would talk, and not in a good way. We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of 12-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to, uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. I'm afraid it would cause quite a stir if the neighbors saw you two stomping about. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Let's talk outside. Can we talk? We 
We'd hardly been there a minute, and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I thought they'd be scandalized. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid Aetherwave dramas, and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider, and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. I'd have a great one-liner in the tube. I was thinking either, the leather's fake but the scars are real, or, oops, did I just track awesome onto your rug? Father would throw his hands up, because this would be just like me, to come back and make a big scene. Then, Mother would do the old, you had us worried sick. Her eyes would be red, and she'd have her fist in front of her mouth to stifle a sob. I'm not hurt. I'm outraged. Affronted, even. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. Hey, the last thing I want to do is sit around thinking about all this. I want to take action. I want to... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? Wanna bet? I've got some big appetites, and they're all cheap. I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing, and I'll get to cut them off. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Something on your mind? Or, uh, Dr. Bentel. I noticed your pistol's been making a funny noise. What are you talking about? I oil it every night. Well, look here. Your slide's not recoiling fully. You might be due for a new spring. I could take a look. Maybe fix it for you. Uh, sure. I'm short on bits at the moment, but I'll pay you back. Oh, no. I mean, it don't cost nothing. I got a spare spring in my pocket here, even. Everything's got a price. I guess we're going to Fallbrook. Down there, the new ship. Doesn't look like any of the corporate freighters. But what would they be doing here? And how did we ever get permission?
A reminder to all crew members, there is only one toilet on the ship. I swear, next time we put in the groundbreaker, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna ask her over. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm having trouble focusing on my work. Oh, you mean Sam? He's just the sweetest, ain't he? A real charmer, my dad would say. Nah, but I've been thinking on one. Gotta get to know him better, I think. Maybe ask him what he prefers. It ain't nice to give folks a nickname without him giving you the okay first, you know? Of course, that don't stop Felix. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench. We'll be here, Captain. I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial. Felix, your abs are surely not gonna believe this. You know Princess of a Bestia? Okay, Captain, she's gone! I'm near about vibrating, I'm so excited. So she got here, and... Well, she sneezed. She said, wow, new soap? And I was like, yeah, rosish. <laughs> Turns out it tickled her nose. Oops. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? 
I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. She was worried she wouldn't get the words out right, especially after that message about Isabel. Sweet. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! And then she sneezed again, on account of the flowery soap. We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it would work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals, talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Jun Lei at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy scream into my pillow for like an hour. We're now in orbit of a stellar bay, Captain. I shipped with a Merc who had a gun like yours, Nyoka. He polished it, sang to it, slept with it. Not like that. You seen Arthur today? Eh, last time I... This looks like the place. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. 
So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch. But financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can... What's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. We prefer to think of it as chasing the savings. Turns out that not having to pay kickbacks, fines, and rent in the most expensive city in Halcyon improves our liquidity. Plus, Sublight keeps this place running remarkably well, and they sure drive business our direction. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Are you serious? Well, we interviewed the parents extensively. They had plenty of awkward childhood stories that illustrated their daughter's clumsiness and capriciousness. Hey, those are entirely made up. Furthermore, the claim spurred a whole line of fashion-related policies. It's become a very lucrative market. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd theoretically add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. That's for the best. What can I do for you? Hell of a job. Can we talk? You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. I've never been prouder to stand back and watch someone else work. I'm just glad my folks aren't gonna live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Sure. You did my job, so here's your fee. Don't make it weird. Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? I always thought it meant we get used to the smell of each other's dirty socks. But you really do see a rosier version of things, huh? You 
don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. So you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's nothing personal. It's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy feelies, huh? If I never smell another raft, it'll be too soon. Weren't you a sawbones? Figured you ought to have smelled worse. Sure, but those things reek like bad cologne. It's different. I'm with you there. At least humans have the courtesy to wait a while before their bodies start to stink. Most of them. are causing a disturbance on the ship. We've reached HRS-1084, Captain. It's emitting a very weak docking signal. I almost mislabeled it as normal etheric static.